There will be no spoilers in this report about Wandering Earth 2, so if you have yet to see the movie, you can watch this introduction without fear. You probably already know the basic story. The Earth has to be moved, yes, the whole planet, and scientists have to make it happen. The movie has world-class special effects, epic landscapes, and mind-blowing action sequences. But there are also lots of really interesting scientific concepts visited along the way, such as the nature of consciousness and so on. Like most Hollywood blockbusters, we have clunky dialogue, rescued by a strong storyline. And again, like most pop sci-fi tales, the science makes no sense whatsoever if you're a physics scholar, but is fascinating if you are any other moviegoer. I've just come out of the cinema where I've been watching Wandering Earth 2 and it's like, it's so full on. It's like, uh, I feel like I've saved the world myself. <laughs> China has remarkably quickly made a blockbuster movie in the sort of Michael Bay action movie style with some uh, very interesting sci-fi elements. This film is already uh, a movie that is worthy being popular worldwide and uh, both from critics and from the public. Does the film have any message about democracy or different ways of governance? The American go the Americans are basically like saying like uh, from a democratic point of view we got to shut down this project because uh, the majority of people are against it. But the Chinese are saying, yeah, but doing it is the right thing to do for the next generations, for like uh, my son and my son's son. So I found that this contradiction was particularly interesting because it can be it can be applied to many different things from like the different ways that um, the governments uh, dealt with the pandemic, but also to uh, climate uh, crisis. Mm -hmm. I feel so. I I think it was particularly interesting from this point of view. Our friends James Marsh and Steve Hackman, both uh, movie lovers based in Hong Kong, felt that there was a climate change allegory. So you've got this weird situation where everybody fighting for this cause knows that they will not benefit from the result of it, but they're doing it for future generations. And therefore the whole thing is a big climate change allegory. It's you make sacrifices now so that future generations will benefit. And obviously there are some people who feel that that's important and there are other people who feel, nah, I'm just going to make the most of my time, I think. Summed up very well, James. Yeah, this is this is one of the highest concept films I've watched <laughs> in a long time. Uh, I mean, the premise is so absurd in many ways mm. that at first you're like, really? But I found myself in the first uh, Wandering Earth and with the, the prequel uh, sequel, uh, you you get drawn into this story. It's it's a fascinating story. Is it propaganda? Every form of media is propaganda. It's just a matter of like, what is the message that propaganda is sending out? And in this yeah. case, it's, it's, it's like a message of unity. It's like a message of getting together to solve bigger issues as hmm. humans as a whole. In every American movie, an American <laughs> saves the world. And in this one, China doesn't save the world. China leads the nations of the world in a, in a combined effort. It's very refreshing because I think like when we watch science fiction movies, um, we are used to see uh, enemies from other planets, uh, like a lot of like uh, fighting with uh, outside enemies. And this movie actually, the enemy is just ourselves. So like there's no other enemy than humans and the way that we interact with each other and we build our society. So I think like, this way of framing the story I thought was very new and I think especially for like Western audiences I feel this is a very different point of view, a very different angle. I can't think of any other movie without a bad guy except perhaps um, Mary Poppins. I think Mary Poppins doesn't have a bad guy in it, but that was in 1960 something. Is there room for different movies from a multipolar world? I am definitely tired of superhero movies so... I can't guarantee that's where we're heading to, but I surely hope so. What was like your favorite part? Just the kids in the movie were my mm. favorite part because they're so sweet and innocent and gave their parents like so much hope and um, drive to mm. save the world. Mm.